Hello everyone, welcome to my sketching class. Today we're using the reference from the book called World's Cutest Animals. We are sketching bearded impaired tamarind. Of course, we're gonna focus on the porches. We will sketch a little bit on um, the chest, but not a lot. We're start. We're gonna start the sketch with 2B pencil. We're gonna draw a circle. The circle is about one third of the width of our sketching page. Try to make the circle as round as you can. The rounder the better. And when you sketch, relax your hand. Then, we draw a horizontal line to divide the circle into two parts. We need to make sure the horizontal line is parallel to the top and the bottom edges of our sketching page. Divide the diameter inside the circle into two parts. Use your pencil and your thumb. To measure the half right of the diameter and then we compare the length to the half left of the diameter to see if they are equal. If they are equal, um, the mark we just made is placed at the middle. If they are not, you need to modify the center of your circle. Then we draw a vertical line that passes the mark we just made. And make sure the vertical line is straight and parallel to the left and the right edges of our sketching page. It's gonna tilt it a little bit. I'm gonna fix it. That's why we need to sketch really gently, so we can erase quickly. We divide the radius. It is the gap between the center of the circle to the outline of the circle into four parts. It's better that you divide each radius into two parts first. Use your pencil and your thumb to check the lengths, make sure they are equal to each other, and then divide each half into two parts. Now we have four even lengths. We do the same to the rest. Then, we're going to draw two horizontal lines that pass the second and the third marks on the top radius. Of course, all the horizontal lines should be parallel to each other. And of course, we need to check, we need to sketch really um, gently. We have two vertical lines that pass the first and the second marks on the right radius. Another, add another two vertical lines that pass 
the second and the third marks on the left radius. Try to make the, all the vertical lines parallel to each other and straight. The straighter, the better. We divided the gap between the first and the second horizontal lines into two parts. We make a mark on the second vertical line. We draw a curve that is curved to the top and we make it touch the first horizontal line. Turn the lines to the bottom left and make it pass the middle of the gap between the first and the second horizontal line. Stop once you pass the first and vertical line. The left corner At the left, I will be a little bit lower than the right corner. So to draw the bottom of the eye, we need to start near the first vertical line, not on the first vertical line. The bottom of the eye will be flat. It looks like we use three lines to draw the bottom of the eye. And you can see that overall, the bottom line of the eye is flatter than the top. It's just perspective to make him look like he's looking up. From the intersection between the first horizontal line and the first vertical line, we draw a curve for the upper lid. The upper lid will be thickest at the middle. It will become thinner as we go to the right and the left. Do the same to the right eye. We need to make a mark on the fourth vertical line, and the mark is placed between the first and the second horizontal line. Make the curve touch the first horizontal line. Turn the line to the bottom right. The line passes the middle of the gap between the first and the second horizontal line. And when you start the right corner, start on the right side of the last vertical line, not on the last vertical line. Make sure the bottom of the right eye is as slow as the bottom of the left eye. You will see that um, the right eye looks smaller than the left eye. It is because of the illusion of the upper lid. Because the left eye has the upper lid, it looks larger than the right eye. So you have to be careful on that. From the intersection between the first horizontal line and the fourth vertical line, Jock. We're done with the eye shape. To determine the nostril, we're gonna start at the intersection between the first I mean the second horizontal line, the second vertical line. We draw one, two, and three lines for the border between um, the white fur and the dark fur. Under the second horizontal line, we add one curve, or it's like a partial oval. You can see that if I complete the left side right here, it will look like an oval, but we only draw the top, the bottom, and the right side of the oval. Opposite to the left, when you draw the oval for the nostril, at the right side, I draw the top, the bottom, and the left side.
we divide the first section on the bottom radius into two parts and start a curve. Draw a horizontal line that passes the second line on the bottom radius. Draw a lip corner. Do the same to the right. You can see that the lip is curved to the top of the middle. As we go to the left and the right side, it will be straighter and lightly curved toward the bottom. I want to use curve line to draw the shape of the nose a little bit before. You can see that the shape of the nose is kind of close to the first, I mean the second vertical line and the fourth vertical line. And then we draw two vertical lines that pass the left and the right side of the circle. We duplicate one fourth of a radius. To the left side of the circle and draw a vertical line. Do the same to the right. Duplicate one fourth of the radius to the right side and draw a vertical line. We need to duplicate half of a radius to the bottom of the circle and draw a horizontal line. From the middle of the second section at the bottom radius, we draw a curve. It is short. This curve will become further away from the lip as it goes to the bottom. We draw a wavy line from the right to the left and the line is curved to the bottom and lightly curved to the left. It will touch the first vertical line when it passes the fourth horizontal line. And we're gonna stop when we pass the last horizontal line. We do the same to the right. Uh, the line will be sliding to the bottom right. It will be curved to the bottom first. It passes the third mark on the right to radius, and then it will touch the last vertical line. Under the fourth horizontal line, we draw a curve. Yeah. Don't make the light too dark. Use multiple soft lines to sketch. Otherwise, it will look like horns. Yeah. Make sketching. Um, we make sure that the fur at the middle will be shorter than the fur at the very end left and very right. So when you're done with this step, I would like you to, I would like you to take about 30 seconds to check your work. You can put your sketch far away, at least one arm far away, check the sketch and see how it look.
we move on to the next part. From the first mark on the top radius, we draw a curve for the ship to head. The line is slightly curved to the top and then keeps sliding to the bottom left. When it's about to reach the second horizontal line, it will be sliding to the bottom left. It passes the intersection between the third horizontal line and the second vertical line. Do the same to the right. Under the first horizontal line, we draw one curve that is slightly curved to the top. It passes the intersection between the first horizontal line and the second vertical line. And then, once you pass the second vertical line, turn the line to the bottom left. Well, we need to make sure that it will touch the first vertical line. The bottom of the ear will be close to the outlet of the base. And we stop when we reach um, the outline for the uh, the outline of the beard. When you draw the right ear, it will be similar. Draw one, two, and three lines. To draw the shoulder from the intersection between the last horizontal line and the second vertical line, draw a little curve. We do the same to the right. Um, we'll make sure that the shoulder will not pass the first vertical line or the right, I mean the last vertical line. When you're done, Put your sketch photo where this one arm far away, check the sketch and see how it look. And when you feel like you are done, go ahead and erase the guidelines. We erase the circle, all the horizontal lines and vertical lines. When you erase the gap between those first, if you erase the guidelines on the left side, use curve lines like that to erase. If you erase on the right side, use curve lines 
which are curved to the right to your brace. When you're done, you need a cotton ball, squeeze it, and then with a circular pattern, blend from the top to the bottom. From the top right to the bottom left. We're going to shade the left eye first. We draw a curve at the top right. It's like you are drawing an oval, but the oval is bent and curved to the top right. Relax your hand, hold your pencil far in the back, use curve line to shade the outline of the eye and as shade to the bottom. Shade it more gentle. We make the eye dark at the top and brighter to the bottom, and we will not. Uh, we will not shade it over the highlight shape, like the band's oval. We will not go over that. You ha you gotta make sure that your pencil is sharp, because the eye is really tiny. He looks like he's blind right now because he, his eye doesn't have people. We use curve line. Shade from the bottom to the top. We shade the base of the people. And as we shade to the top, we shade less. Use curve lines, shade the upper lid. The upper lid will be dark at the middle. As you go to the left, it will be softer. Relax your hand. We use circular pattern. We shade from the outline of the nose, shade to the top. So this will help us create um, a border, really, really subtle border between the nose bridge and the eye. If you have taken my lessons before on our school, you will notice that um, right here we have a shadow. So we can feel the presence the nose. Without this curve right here, he would look like having no nose. Relax your hand. Straight from the outline of the face. to the bottom and do not touch the upper lid or you can stop at the upper lid and try not to touch the eye as we shade to the bottom 
We will not touch the eye either. We will stop when we reach the beard. Of course, he looks kind of hell right now. We need to work more later. Use Q-tip. We plan from the lighter valley to the darker valley. So we plan from the middle of the nose bridge. Go to the left. We work on the eye. Uh, when we're done with um, the face. Use that q to blend over the ear. This will help us soften the outline of the ear, and as you blend to the bottom of the ear, try not to touch the outline of the face. Tricky, right? Now we go over the eye. We tone down whole eye. Then we lightly blend to the right. Then, we go back, touch up the top of the eye, especially the left corner, the right corner. Shade the bottom of the eye. You can see that it's darker. It makes the eye deeper. Use circular pattern to shade the upper lid. But at this time right here, we are using circular pattern to create value. And the value will be dark when it's close to the upper lid. It will be fading away. Become softer. Let's go to the top. Is curve line. Shake a little bit like this, and then we're done with the left eye. I would like to finish up the half left of the face, so I'm going to use circular pattern, shade from the outline of the face, shade to the top. At the bottom of the left ear, it will be darker than the left side of the face. The outline at the top of the ear will be dark, but not as dark as the bottom. Then I'll go back using curved lines, which are curved to the top to add texture of fur on the outline. more time. I'm going to use Q-tip to brush, not blend. When you brush, 
you have to it's like blending but you have to be gentle more gentle than when you blend I'm gonna go back and work more on the highlights later that's his face for now let's see how dark we can get and then we're gonna go back and work more when you shade the right eye it will be similar we draw an oval bent and curved to the top. New circular pattern. Straight from the top of the eye to the bottom. We make sure that the right eye is lighter than the left eye. We use curve line, shade the people. Relax your hand, hold your pencil further in the back, shade the upper lid, and make it fade away as it goes to the top. We will have a little shadow right here. You can see that I, re I shade really gently. from the outlet of the beard straight to the top as you straight to the right straight left we will not touch the outline at the right side of the face. We we'll use circular pattern shape from the outline of the face. You can see that by shading lightly on the right side, we show a really high contrast, right? We know that the light comes from the top right to the bottom left. We're going to use Q-tip to blend. We're going to blend from the right to the left. From the top to the bottom.
you see that the contrast is kind of lower a little bit because we um, darkened the bright area. We make it back. We make all the highlights brighter with the eraser after we're done touching up the eye. And for the eye, make sure the left side is darker than the right. Use circular pattern to touch up the dark area. At this time, you can use curve lines to capture the fur texture. Make sure the base of the ear is darker than the top. And of course, the right ear cannot be as dark as the left. I want to use q tip to brush gently. Don't worry, we will get back to it and do the highlights later. Turn down the half left a little bit. Okay. When you shade the nostril, use circular pattern shade from the outline of the nostril to the other side. Use curve line. Shade the lip. Make the lip lighter as it goes to the bottom. We don't have to add the lip corner, but if you like to, you can add the lip corners like that. Relax your hand. The middle of um, the nose and the mouth are pinky. And you know that pink is brighter, I mean darker than white, right? So we have to use curve light. Short. Show you the texture of the beard. If you have the book with a reference, Look at the reference. If the beard is long, you have to use long lines. If the beards are, if the beard is uh, short, you have to use short lines. Remember, the beard is bright. You don't want to make it too dark. We make the body dark to push the shape of the beard later. Keep all the lines soft and close to each other. Okay. 
when you shave the body, you have to imagine a little bit. We shave from the middle to the sides. We shave along with the shape of the beard. But we will stop when we reach the beard. Relax your hand. The fur will become wider, longer. Let's go to the bottom. His fur is not fully dark. It's a mix between white and brown and yellow. We make the right shoulder brighter than the left. You're done. We have went from the brighter value to the darker value. I'm gonna use Q-tip. We brush from the right side of the, of the beard. We brush to the left. We go over the nostril. When you blend, you have to follow the direction, the pattern of um, the fur. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we touch up the very top of the upper lip, we make the valley brighter as we go to the bottom. We use curve fly to add little fur. To separate the um, the bottom of the uh, lower jaw from 
the friends of um the chip. I know it's kinda I can clear it right now. So that's my favorite part. When you're done, you're gonna use cotton ball with a circular pattern, tone down the background. We utilize the graphite we have on the edge of um, the tamarind. Blend to the bottom like that. You can see that it's kind of dull right now because we don't have the brightest value yet. You have to make sure that the background is dark enough because later I'm going to use eraser to draw the highlights. If the background is not dark enough, this technique will be... will not work. As always, after blending, I need to go back and touch up. This time, we will touch up the left side mostly. Use the light slightly shade. I know that shading fur is kind of frustrating sometimes, but it's worth it's worth it. When you see the final result, you have to use soft lines to keep all the lines close to each other. Show a little bit on the left side of the right shoulder. Push the contrast of uh, the beard. Relax your hand. Make sure that the left side is darker than the right. side of the face. Use soft line, short, to touch up the shape of the nose. 
there will be a sound value at the very bottom right here to determine the depth or the form of the nose. So make sure you have it. It's always a good time to put your sketch file away to check if the values are right or not. And I'm focusing on the left side. Okay, then we're going to use Eraser to pull out the highlight. We work on the brightest part first, which is the, the beer. On the right side. I'm not making the really dark value become brighter. When you draw, when you add the highlight, take the value that is bright or sort of in the middle to draw the highlights. I would not go over this shadow right here because I don't want to shade it in yet. At the very bottom, got the beer. It's really important that we make the contrast high to separate the view from the chest. Of course, we have to make sure that our eraser is sharp. If it's not sharp, we cannot do the job. The beer will be dark at the bottom. End. I mean, will be really bright at the bottom. As it goes to the top, it will become darker. There will be some highlight at the bottom right, the eye at the very right side of the face. At the very top of the head. Done. I'll touch up the left side a little bit more. You can add more shading to make the contrast higher.
you done? Saw you work at the bottom right. I'll stay my work. So that's all about the lesson for today and I hope you found this lesson helpful and enjoyable. Keep sketching and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.